I'm Zandi Lendela and I'm your host for today. Um, once again, we're back to introduce you guys to the various in career options that we have within the aviation space. So today, we've got um, two guests that will be telling us basically what they do for a living. They're called AMEs. I'm just as curious as you are what they do. But before we go to them, let me just tell you briefly about the SACA, um, which is our sponsor and what they're responsible for. They are the regulator of the aviation industry. What they do is basically is to monitor compliance throughout the civil aviation industry. They are there to make sure that everybody does what they're supposed to, when they're supposed to, when they're supposed to do it. Rules and regulations, basically. And stuff like issuing pilot licenses, for example. So I hope that gives you an idea. Now I'm going to go to our guests and we find out more about them. Ladies, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jamie. Um, I'm going to start with you. Please just briefly tell us who you are, where you're from, and... How you got to where you are now. All right. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Nolutando Maluka. I um, I'm from Worcester. It is in the Western Cape, known as it, it's also known as Poland. Um, I went to school. Um, okay, I won't bother you guys with primary and secondary and and, 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 and high primary, but my secondary school was Vesisisa Secondary School, which is uh, the high school in my location. Sorry to just interject there. Um, I'm just curious about where you come from. Is it a village? Is it a township? Um, it's a township. It's a township, please. Oh, okay. All right. It's a township. Mm. And um, it's... It's a small. It's a small area. It's a small spa, uh, place um, near Cape Town. Oh, okay. All right. Good yeah. show. Sure. Yeah. Then we can move on to the okay. education. No problem. Yes. Um. Um. I'm an aircraft maintenance engineer. Mm -hmm. I started my training in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. For you to be an 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 AME, which is aircraft maintenance engineer, you have to undergo a certain training. Okay. I'll start from the entry level. Entry level, you must have passed metric um, with, uh, with uh, uh, English, maths, and science. For those three specifically, you must have um, have passed them with a level five. And um, once you okay after after finishing your metric. Then obviously, um, if 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 you're going to be um, an AME, then you need to go to um, a technical school and follow some other uh, uh, training as well. Uh, not just at the technical school, at the at the at the at the, at the squadrons as well, and so forth. Where did you so, like, for example, your journey? Where did you go? Um, did you go to the Air Force? Oh, like yes. your particular gen, I'm very curious. Uh, who's the lady I'm sitting with? Okay, mine. I did it um, with the Air Force. Okay, I went to the Air Force, and um, I did my basic training as any other um, career mm -hmm. in the Air Force. You start with uh, military basic training. Okay, so you must have passed your um, military basic training. Mm -hmm. Um, for you to, so they start with your, okay, they check if you qualify, first of all, mm -hmm. to, 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 to be an aircraft maintenance engineer, meaning you must have, you must have your English, your maths, your science with the correct, um, entry level that they require. And once you've done that, then, um, if they are, uh, are pleased with your with your with with your qualifications, then they will invite you for for an interview. Mm -hmm. You go for an interview, and um, they just want to have a feel of um, just to interact with you and see where you are, mm -hmm. and then they will invite you for um, and then they will call you back again for uh, 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 a test. Uh, some it, 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 it's an aptitude test, mm -hmm. and uh, you. Do psych, uh, psych that like they check a lot of things. They they check psych. Um, um, they 
they check what kind of a, your personality and so on and so forth. But it's different. Um, I think maybe you would write something like three or four exams okay. just to uh, for them to 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 see where you are and if they really need if they really can accept you. Okay. All right, and then um, after that, then um, they will then invite uh, they, they will invite you for for medicals because you must be medically fit for them to hire you. Medical so, is in one state of health in terms of fitness, so fitness. that the learners at home can understand what we mean. Oh by yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, yeah. All right, yes, um, fitness and um, yeah, and then. If once you pass your uh, medical examination, because remember they will check your teeth, they will check they 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 check your blood, your teeth, your eyes, your whatever. The general state your of general health. state and of health. Fitness, and fitness, yes. Okay. And then um, you, once you pass that, mm. then um, they will now invite you for uh, for the basic training. Mm. Then you do the basic training, and then after the basic training, then you start your your call. Whichever it is, if you want to be a doctor or whatever, in my case, I wanted to be an aircraft maintenance engineer. So the, um, I went to um, Swanee South College, used to be a Centurion Technical College at the time. It is now uh, Swanee South. And um, I did my mechanical one. Mechanical one is just, they just want to show you things like um, welding, you know, Things that you will be uh, uh, using or working with when you are already in the field. Okay. And then um, once you are done with your mechanical one, you can continue to work mechanical two, three, and so forth. But uh, for this, you only require to do the mechanical one. That's the only one needed. That's the only one needed and for then, the entry. Yes. Okay. And then after and that, you do the school block. Mm. The school block. Um, remember, you've already passed metric because yes. you must pass metric before they can accept you otherwise mm. yeah and then um you go you you, you do a school block technical college for school block you have if you have metric then you start um with n4 okay so um you do your n4 and the reason for that is so that they can introduce things like um technical drawing and introduce things like um uh, um, um theory of flight so those are the most important modules that they need you to do the school block so you can have a little bit of a background mm -hmm. of what field you are getting into. Okay. And then um, you finish your school block, then um, you go to, you, you do your, you don't start with your apprenticeship, but it's, it's called apprenticeship, but you don't necessarily start with it immediately. What you do, you, I went to um, 68 a school. It is um, a, 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 an Air Force school of technical uh, training. So um, 68 a school, that is where I did my, um, my, my theory. Theory, it is about around six months. Okay. In that six months, you do about 32 modules. Okay which you need to um, pass, passing mark is uh, is is 80%. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's 80% and mm -hmm. then you are only allowed to fail uh, three times. Mm -hmm. So if you write a module, you fail it. If you rewrite and fail again, then that's your second attempt. Mm -hmm. uh, if you fail another module, so once you reach your three attempts, of the modules, um, then unfortunately you get kicked off the course. Okay. Oh. And then, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so, um, and then once you finish your, um, your, your theory, then you do your practical. Mm -hmm. So we did the practical training. Uh, it's also six months. The um, Pass mark for that is ninety percent for the okay. practical. Mm. Um, you are again same as the theory. You mm. only allowed to fail th three times. Mm. You do your rewrite. Should you fail the rewrite, mm. then 
remember now, um, the, the, the pass mark is 90%. Mm. But if you fail, then you are required to get 100% on the rewrite. Okay. So if you get 97%, mm. then that counts as your second attempt. Yes. Then you must write again oh, for you to get 100%. Mm. But you only get three times the same as the theory. Mm. And then um, after that, um, once you are done with uh, with your with your uh, pr uh, practical training, mm. now you go into what we call in the Air Force a squadron phase. A squadron phase is the actual apprenticeship, mm -hmm. which is now you are going to work with aircraft that fly. Remember when we were doing the 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 the, the practical. Mm -hmm. We did it on uh, just aircraft that were not necessarily flying or anything. Okay. Yes. So now you go to a squadron. It's like um, it's like if you were at SAA. Mm -hmm. If you were at SAA, the aircraft that fly every day. Mm -hmm. Now you will be working oh, with those aircraft. Okay. Yeah. So now the squadron in the Air Force, um, the squadrons are where um, they do flying operations okay. so all the aircraft are at the different squadrons oh. as a matter being helicopters mm -hmm. uh, yeah, fighter aircraft or yeah and then now um when you are doing your um apprenticeship it it takes you two years takes you two years for you to be qualified as an um, as a technician so um, you you work on whatever uh, aircraft that you are working in. It's it's aircraft 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 components, whatever it is. But whatever you are doing, you have to log it mm -hmm. because we work on man hours. Mm -hmm. So your time is calculated on man hours. You can't say, okay, I I went to work this whole month, therefore I I finished a month already yes so it doesn't count if you didn't do anything oh. so that's why you have to you log you get a logbook and then you log all all of your hours and then um then it gets calculated as men hours how many men hours have you worked so that is going to be two years and then you qualify as uh, and, and 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 then before at the end of that two years you are required to write a trade te uh, a trade test Trade test is um, is an examination that you wow. cannot fail because if you do fail, do you get a second chance? No, no, you don't. You're done. You, you are done. You have again. to start all over oh, again. No. You are not done, as in they don't kick you out of the course, but mm. you have to start all From over scratch. again. From scratch, yes. No. So now. Um, now you have to pass your trade test. Mm. And then when you pass your trade test, then you are given um, mechanics creed. You sign that, then you feel okay. Mm. Now I am a technician. Because with um, with aircraft maintenance engineers, you do not get things like a diploma or you know, when you've done your three years, then you get a diploma. Mm. Because by the time you by the time you finish now, um, this time, yes. it, it would have been three years. Okay. Yeah. So what so do you get? You get, um, you just, um, they just give you that mechanics creed. Mm -hmm. You like sign certificate. that. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's sort of like an A4, A4 paper that tells you that um, it's like, um, I will do my best to, you oh, know, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. why I was like, okay. it's sort of like, it's got no, no, honor. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. and then, um, once you are done with that, mm. then now you need to um, do two years. Okay. Additionally, to the three years, mm -hmm. then you do two years. Those two years now you remember when you were doing um, the, the, the when you were doing your apprenticeship, mm. you worked under supervision of a qualified AAB, yes. right? Mm. So that person is there. Whatever you are doing, mm. that person is there. For that duration of time, to observe that you're, doing, observe the right that you're doing the right thing. Okay. So now, once you qualify, mm -hmm. you get your creed. Okay. You are now a qualified um, uh, a technician. Okay. So now you are called now a technician. Okay. So, 
once you are called a technician, then you can work on your own, mm -hmm. but you cannot sign everything out. You will, you will, uh, when you do maintenance, you will do the maintenance and then you sign the work done by, but somebody, in, a qualified AME must come mm -hmm. and inspect what, that whatever you've done is correct. Oh. So now, yeah, now that you are a technician, mm -hmm. that person doesn't have to be with you 24 7. Okay. Same as before, where that person had to be there. Okay. So now you can do the work, mm -hmm. finish it, then he can come and, okay. and oversee because now you are a technician, qualified technician. Okay. And then now you, um, you get your two years, you go and do your. Um, you need because now for you to get an AME, an AME license, you must be type qualified. Okay, what does yeah. that mean? Type qualified means um, a, a specific aircraft that you worked on. You must have worked a, a certain amount of hours on that aircraft for you to qualify on it. So now they will uh, check your main hours mm -hmm. together with whatever. Um, your 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 main hours together with the with the with the certificate course of that aircraft that um that you 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 you've worked on you work on 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 this aircraft mm. you you go and write remember you will be doing your it will be the you will do your your airframe your engine everything the systems of that aircraft mm -hmm. so now when you do this course. They teach you everything about this aircraft. The specific the aircraft. Specific aircraft. Not they all teach you. aircraft. Not okay. all aircraft. Okay. The specific one. Okay. And then once they teach you everything about the specific and everything, then you write obviously an exam. And then mm -hmm. that exam, uh, then once you finish that course, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, so that certificate that you get mm -hmm. from that um, manufacturer, because some most most of them you can. All, all of these things you can write them at, at CAA, mm -hmm. but most of them you you get to do them um, uh, with the manufacturers okay, of the aircraft. Of the aircraft okay. Yes, of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. And then you get that qualification together with your logbook. Mm -hmm. You take those two to Civil Aviation Authority, mm -hmm. and then our sponsor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, they will check if you've accumulated enough um, practical for them to issue you with a license okay. and then they issue you with a license and then that is an a an aircraft maintenance a license okay yeah so at that point when they issue that license you are now a qualified right. aircraft a maintenance engineer yes okay yes, yes. Now you are. yeah mm -hmm. and then um um again so now all in all for you to be an aircraft maintenance engineer mm -hmm. qualified aircraft maintenance engineer mm -hmm. That means you would have done five years of training. Okay. At, at the end of it all. Mm. Yes. So now most people, um, because it's quite, it's a very, very expensive training. Mm. Most parents, especially the, the, the underprivileged homes and everything, they cannot afford to take the kids through the training. Mm. So we get places like the, uh, like the Air Force, like Dina, I did it in the Air Force because mm -hmm. obviously my parents wouldn't have had that kind of money. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I was sponsored by the Air Force. Dinel also sponsors and um, South African um, SAA also sponsors. South yes. African Airways. Yeah. Our national yeah. carrier, the airline. Yes. Mm -hmm. South African also sponsors. So and then, yeah. So now once um, you do that, then you are done. You do the courses. So now it doesn't matter how many you can... Me, for instance, mm -hmm. I did um, 737. I have an AME license for 737, mm -hmm. for Falcon 50, mm -hmm. Falcon 900, mm -hmm. Falcon 900 EX, mm -hmm. um, Citation 550, and 500. Wow. So you, yeah, you can have as many. So that gives you, um, that gives you opportunities to work on different aircraft. Mm -hmm. Because remember, sometimes you would be hired by a company that only, um, flies citations. Mm. If you have only a 737, they cannot hire you no. because, yeah, so because for you to be able to work there, you must have a citation license. Yes. Mm. So, yeah, so because of that, the more experience and the more um, uh, 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 
aircraft you 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 work on and and and, and get experience on the better for you especially if you want to stay and 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 work as an um, aircraft mechanic on the floor for maybe the rest of your life but then again with me again um i am now working for the civil aviation authority on that one hold that thought All before right. we talk your work experience right. i just want to quickly um engage our next guest as well so she can briefly tell us about her journey as well then after she's done that um then we want to get into the work experience part of it then we take it from there All welcome right. Thank you. Yes, my AME. <laughs> Hit me. What do you do? <laughs> well, like you've already said, uh, my name is Tavi Lilanson. I'm mm -hmm. an aircraft maintenance engineer mm -hmm. in AME. Mm -hmm. um, I come from a small village called Ramasemola in mm -hmm. Limpopo. Mm -hmm. Very rural. We used to carry Inkoni on our heads mm -hmm. and water and all that. Wow. Um, I completed my matric at a school called... Um, Christ the King Academy in Turf Law. So I, um, I went to boarding school. Okay. <laughs> so after I, I did my matric, um, I went to China South College mm -hmm. to do my aircraft maintenance theory. I did up to N6. Mm -hmm. And then after I completed my N6, I started looking for a job. I got a job at a small company called Turbine Vision. I didn't work for very long there, about six months. Mm -hmm. And then I applied for a job at South African Police Services. They were looking for apprentices. So I applied for the job and then I got it and I started my career mm -hmm. at South African Police Services. Um, I did my first year apprenticeship at Dinell. It's a one-year course where they teach you basics about uh, aircraft maintenance. Mm -hmm. They teach you what are the tools that you use and then you also do modules, about 36 modules. Mm -hmm. For the whole year, you do practical as well as uh, theory work. Mm -hmm. And after completing that one year, I went back on the floor and did my experience, my two-year experience, mm -hmm. which are also logged in hours, which is a requirement of about 2,500 hours that you have to do within the two years. Wow. And then after that two years, we went and did our trade test. Mm -hmm. The trade test qualifies you as an artisan. Okay. So the trade test we do in the other government institution called Inglela. Okay. Which is an olifant's container. Okay. So before you do the trade test, you go back to Dinell and do your preparatory work. Mm -hmm. And then you go through an intense uh, exam of two days mm -hmm. where you do both theory and practical. Okay. So they give you a raw aircraft and then they tell you what to do on a rig it and then that is your exam. Then wow. there's no room for failure. Mm -hmm. As we all know in aviation, there's, there's no room for mistake. Mm -hmm. So it's only one attempt and that's it. Mm -hmm. So for those two, in two days, you do that intense training, intense uh, examination. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you get a trade certificate, which is offered by the government, which is the Department of Transport, okay. which qualifies you as an uh, artisan. Okay. Then after that, you go and work again for another two years on the floor, which you have to log in more hours. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, within that two years, you have to do a type-rated course as well as uh, as type courses like human factors, airframe general. I decided I was specializing in helicopters, so I did rotocraft general instead of, uh, um, uh, what is it, fixed wing general, airframe general. general. So we did uh, rotocraft general because okay. I was working on, on helicopters. Mm -hmm. So after the two years, you take your hours and then you bring them to Civil Aviation Authority mm -hmm. and then they grant you the, the license as a qualified aircraft maintenance mm -hmm. engineer. Mm -hmm. So I've been working in the police for 13 years. Wow. That is where I got uh, most of my experience. Mm -hmm. And the police obviously did sponsor me mm -hmm. with my training and everything because I obviously could not afford it. But initially, I wanted to be an aeronautical engineer, mm -hmm. but I could not afford mm -hmm the fees at mm. that, at that um, university. Mm. So I opted for second best, which mm. was, according to me, it was second mm. best, but it turned out to be a blessing. Mm. So I went to a college which we could afford mm. at home at the time. Mm. And I never looked back. Mm. You know, it's, it's one of those things. We did maths and science in high school, which was my favorite subject. Mm -hmm. Less studying. Mm -hmm. Unlike those kids who were doing business classes, they used to sit there the whole night and study the whole book. Mm -hmm. I just took 30 minutes to learn the, 
Your formula is an ounce. <laughs> and I was sorted. You know, you say that like, night is so simple. Somebody at home. Like I said, it's, it's, you put one and one together, you get two. I mean, mm. what can be more? It's already a given. There's nothing <laughs> extraordinary about way. it. There's nothing extraordinary about it, you know. So for me, it was an easy um, mm-hmm. subject that I had, that I did. And I actually enjoyed them. I loved them. I did Mets Olympiads. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they still have them mm-hmm. today. Yeah. It was the easiest thing for me. Just put a number in front of me and then, you know, Bob's our uncle. I see. <laughs> it goes back, I think, then to what you were saying earlier, where you undergo a lot of tests to assess stuff like your personality. Because I love how you speak about maths. Like, it's the simplest <laughs> thing in the world. Someone at home is sitting there thinking, maths is not that simple, you know? You know? <laughs> so, hence the importance of the assessments that they do to mm-hmm. see if you're actually the right person um, to actually pursue this field of work. Mm-hmm. And just briefly, you also mentioned something about fixed wing. Mm-hmm. Can we just maybe then decipher or explain the difference um, between what you were talking about and fixed wing and what that is for someone who's at home and doesn't know what fixed wing is? Mm-hmm. Fixed wing is an aeroplane and then you get the helicopter that will have the that no, water, water. water and then mm-hmm. it will be like three weeks. Fixed wing has got <laughs> your the fixed wings. wings. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's an okay. aeroplane, yes. And thank you for clarifying that as well as also mentioning, I uh, heard you mentioning the word artisan. Mm-hmm. Um, if there's a kid at home who doesn't know what an artisan is, how would you simply, layman's terms, expect, explain what an artisan is? Okay, with an artisan, it means that you have simply done your apprenticeship in the field that you have chosen. In my case, I chose to be an aircraft mechanic. Mm-hmm. Because when you are an artisan, you're still a mechanic. You're not, you're not yet an engineer. Mm-hmm in our field, in our world, in the aviation world. Okay. So what you do is you do your theory in, in, in college, like I did in, in Sotani South College. Mm-hmm. Then after that, I have to do my practical as okay. an apprentice. Oh, okay. Right. And then after you've completed your apprenticeship, and then you go and do a trade test. Mm-hmm. A trade test is a test that um, tests your ability in your trade. Mm-hmm. In our case, it's, it's, it's aircraft maintenance. Okay. So then they give it, like I said, it's a, it's a two-day intense mm. uh, testing and there's no room for failure. You cannot okay. fail. So once you have the certificate from the Department of Transport, it qualifies you as an artisan. Okay. But an artisan, you can only do fitting mm-hmm. on an aircraft. You cannot sign the aircraft out to say that the pilot can go and fly. Mm-hmm. It means you're still in training okay. on your trade. Oh, okay. So it only qualifies you to say that you know you have knowledge about this uh, this field, mm-hmm. but you are not yet qualified to sign anything out. Oh, okay. All right. On that one, um, I just want to quickly go back to this one. If I brought a five year old and said, "Explain to the child what does um, an AME do," what would you say? Just a minute. An AME. Um, what do you do? <laughs> we fix aircraft. We make it. We we are the doctors of the aircraft. <laughs> we fix it to make it fly, to be healthy for the pilot to fly it. <laughs> okay, no, wonderful, great. Then briefly, I just want to quickly now let the viewer know at home, how do you now end up sitting here on a show brought to us by the CAA? What do you do there? Because I, I stopped when we were about to go into your work experience. So just a quick synopsis of that, very briefly. Your work experience leading you to this moment. What do you currently do as well? Okay. At the moment, uh, currently I am an aircraft um, maintenance. maintenance engineer mm-hmm. that works at CAA now. So I do not lose my status as okay. an aircraft maintenance engineer. Mm-hmm. I still uh, update my license mm-hmm. because the work that I do it is still aviation related. Okay. So um, I still have my license. It's still valid. It's still up to date. So I'm still an aircraft uh, maintenance engineer, mm-hmm. but now I am an, an awareness inspector. Okay. Meaning now what I do now is I go and inspect the AMOs, which is the aircraft maintenance organizations mm-hmm. that work on the aircraft. The work okay. that I used to do when I was on the floor. Mm-hmm. So now I go back now, I check them if they are doing the, the work the way they're supposed to do. There's intervals of doing everything. Um, so we check if, if the work that is supposed to be done is done at the correct intervals, if it is done by the by the appropriate rated um, AMEs, and um, as well as um, the it uh, the work is recorded accordingly in the in in, in the aircraft logbooks. Because remember, 
logbooks as well as the work tags because now should that aircraft crash we still need to be able to trace what maintenance was done on that aircraft what could have caused the accident because yes. it might be that uh, a maintenance that was done wasn't done properly or something so all of the paperwork the paper the paper trail we need to make sure that it is up to standard. Oh. No, we keep our licenses current by the job that we are currently doing. Mm -hmm. It's still the same job that we that we do on the floor. Mm -hmm. Like in my section, I work as an aircraft um, inspector. Mm -hmm. I'm on the airworthiness side on the aircraft uh, inspection section, where we make sure that the aircrafts that are being flown in they are safe for flight. Mm -hmm. We issue them with a renewal each and every year. A currency renewal every year. We issue them with special flight permits, mass and balances. So, in other words, we regulate the safety of the aircraft. Mm. So, if we have uh, there's a new aircraft coming into the country, we go and check if that, that aircraft is fit to our standards in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And also, if maybe an aircraft has been in an accident, we make sure that it's back to service in a safe manner. Oh, okay. All right. Thank yes. you. I love that. And just. Quickly, as we wrap things up, I want to find out from both of you very briefly. I want to know what have you been your biggest challenges up to date um, from the time you started pursuing this career path up until now. And I also want to find out what has been the best part in a minute um, of each. Just give me that the best and the worst that you've experienced. Why do you love it so much? Okay, well, um, it's always been my childhood dream. I've always wanted to be either a scientist or an engineer. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I chose the engineering. So it's always been um, a dream of mine. Okay. And then uh, the challenges, I would say, because I was one of the, actually, I was one of the first black female aircraft mechanic engineers. Wow. So um, working on the floor, you would need assistance. Let's say maybe picking up um, a main landing gear. Mm. A male cannot do it by That's himself. Yours, guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a male cannot do it by himself mm. as well. He's gonna need assistance. Mm. But when you ask for assistance, it's like it's like you're asking because you're a woman, mm. you know? Mm. Like such things. And um, so they're quite they were quite irritating, but as time went on you get used to it. Yeah. And then you just accept and you on mm -hmm. but to be quite honest with you i really i enjoyed every bit of it um mm -hmm. i'm not regretting anything mm -hmm. i wouldn't add or subtract whatever happened mm -hmm. i was a learning curve and i i embrace it as such definitely mm -hmm. and what's the best part for you whether as an ame or as an inspector well um as an ame yeah, <laughs> when, when I got my first license, I was like, oh my goodness. I'm Mama, I it. did it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yeah, mm. and uh, as an inspector as well, um, now having to go back and look, because we, we used to be, when we were audited, when I was an inspector, we, we used to be so irritated about but why? They know we're not going to, why must we um, mm. fill this in? Or it's it's common sense, it's common knowledge. Why mm. must we do it and all that? Yeah. And now when you are at this side of the mm. fence, you realize that should that happen, this is why those people back then when I was doing the work, they were nagging me that this should be done this way, that, mm. that should be done this way, uh, um, like the paper train now. Because yes. when you are at, uh, an engineer, believe me, you do not, you don't like paperwork. Mm. Paperwork is the last thing that you want. You want to do your job and do it properly, but the paperwork is not so nice. Mm. But then this side, we concentrate on the paperwork because whatever you record is what we have done. And then we go and verify that whatever it is that you said you've done and you've done and then you go and check on the aircraft is this done and so the papers must prove what, must you're, prove saying. what you're saying okay hold that thought thank you so much thank you. low highs and lows two minutes well the lows let's start there mm. because the lows is um, this is a mainly uh, male dominated industry mm. that's for sure and coming in as a female, like Nurutano, she says that she was one of the first black females to, to be an aircraft maintenance engineer. 
mm. in the organization that I was with, I was the only female there on mm. the floor. There was uh, 10 other males that I was working with. Mm. And I had to deal with the male egos. Mm. You know, <laughs> if I come up with a suggestion, they won't take it because it's from me. Simply, if, No matter how right you are, mm. it cannot be taken in because it's from you. Mm. So you deal with such things and they wear you down so heavily. You can go home crying as a mm. woman, you know, and you're thinking like, why am I being so undermined? Those are the lows most of the time that uh, we, we as females deal with, especially in the male-dominated industry. industry. Mm. But also with me, the highs was when I first got my first AME license. Mm. That was, <laughs> <laughs> I made it. Mm. Yeah. Women or not? Yeah, <laughs> I made it. And <laughs> if I send this aircraft out, it's on me. Mm. I don't have to find validation on somebody else. Yes. It's all on me, mm. you know. It's in my name. Mm. So that was one of the biggest highlights mm. uh, of my career. But also it's a, like, um, it's a fulfilling career. Mm. It's very fulfilling. Believe me, it's fulfilling. I don't know how doctors feel after they operate on someone, and it's like it's the same. It's, you're operating on this aircraft, this machine, this foreign thing, mm. and then you've you've diagnosed the problem, you found it, and then the aircraft is out there. Just when it takes off, and then it comes back and mm. lands. That's it. Yeah, you can't beat that. Mm. Nothing ever, ever, ever beats that. True. No, I'm glad because if you don't do your job properly. Gosh, we're in trouble. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like, one thing is for sure, I always say this to learners that whenever we have problems in the aircraft, I, as a commercial pilot, um, whatever problem you have, you keep it on the ground. You guys can We do. don't take problems into the sky because yeah. if it's up there, it can only go in one direction and that's down here. Mm -hmm. So we like rely on you guys a lot um, to do a proper job because if you don't do a proper job, we're in trouble. To be there. quite honest, we like it when the pilots panic and then you find that it's just the plug that's not <laughs> plugged in. Just the good news. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. Like we laugh and like yo, like this guy came back sweating, <laughs> like I'm gonna die in this aircraft, and only to find that it was just a loose plug. Mm. You know, we we love such things, but pilots also need heroes. I mean. Yeah. Then, yeah, no, I can't deny that. Yeah. That's absolutely true. Um, but one thing I'm taking away from this is safety. I don't know if you guys noticed that as well. Safety is paramount. Hence, well, before I got into the industry, I used to feel like the standards are ridiculous. For us, hell, people think our pass mark is ridiculous. It's 75% for our subjects. But now I'm hearing 90, 80, rewrite is 100%. And it sounds pretty hectic, but it's the safety element, guys. Um, you can't play with human life. Lives are at stake here. You miss a bolt, um, people, it could lead to the loss of human lives. So on that note, as we wrap things up, um, I just want to thank the ladies for coming through today um, and being with us to share your knowledge. Um, guys, there are various platforms out there where you can get more information, social media platforms. Like I say, um, one thing for sure, if you subscribe, like, and, and keep up with this channel, we'll keep bringing the information to you. Also, um, I believe at the end of the show, we'll have the various social media handles for YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Follow the South African Civil Aviation Authority. You'll find definitely find more information on the different career options that are out there. And you might even find that you have some questions for the ladies. Um, feel free. If it's on YouTube, pop your questions through. They'll get back to you with the information that you need. So in essence, we just wanted to enlighten you guys further. I hope you can now see I'm from a township. She's from a township. She's also from a township um, or rather a village. Yeah. So if we could do it, so can you. I hope you're taking that message away because that's the whole point of this concept so that you don't get intimidated by the numbers. Don't get intimidate, intimidated by the color of your skin. So to wrap things up, um, I'm, 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 I'm the one that's the coward that comes saying, hey, there's something wrong with the plug and I'm terrified. But one thing that's, that's important to all of us, um, it's your mindset. Without the right mindset, we wouldn't be sitting here. Mm. Um, I think the ladies would also agree That's with true. me. Um, despite your challenges, despite your background, you can do it. We always say, especially with us, when we do, when we do the flying, that it is your attitude that determines your altitude. That means, for example, the airplane, you pitch the nose down, the airplane goes down. You pitch it up with a bit of power, the airplane begins to climb to gain altitude. So what I'm saying to you is if you have a positive mindset, if you believe you can do it, then you're right. If you believe you can't do it, you're also right. So what am I saying? Get the attitude right so that you can start gaining the altitude. On that note, we're out. <laughs>